Welcome to the Halo Outreach Podcast, where we reach out to you, the Halo community, to keep you up to date on everything that's going on in the Halo universe. What is going on, people of Earth? Welcome to another episode of the Halo Outreach Podcast. I'm your boy, Pat Man, and this is my co-host, Mr. Kevin Cool. It's like you might cut out like right when you said that. The Kevin Cool X. <laughs> and so, welcome guys to episode number 52 of the Halo Outreach Podcast. The podcast that keeps you up to date with everything going That's on my line. in Halo. What, you pass it off? Well, dude, I, 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 we say it in the intro. We don't got to say it again, do we? Well, you just like, can reconfirm. You know, some people oh, are like, okay. wait, did, gotta, do they reaffirm. actually mean it? And I'm like, yeah. YouTube content I mean creation 101, we need to get that ad revenue, so <laughs> we're going to be here for a while, okay? <laughs> Expect this podcast, I know this is a shocker, to last over 10 minutes so we can get that sweet, sweet ad revenue. Mm-hmm, exactly. That's, a so, whole, that's the only reason why we make video. That's the only reason why we make reason. content. Yeah, only yeah. reason. So, uh, Halo Infinite Armor Coding, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We got that on the uh, podcast news for today. We got talk about the Halo 4 flight for a little bit, um, and then a infuriating MCC skin that I have been trying to get when I'm not that good at Halo. We'll dive deeper into that, then we'll do a playlist update. Happy birthday, first of all, to my wife oh. yesterday. Yeah, that's true. And happy birthday to Halo 5 today. Yes. Five years old. If you guys log on today, you would get a rec pack, a uh, premium rec-, rec pack. I forgot exactly what it was called. Uh, the greatest Great hits. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you guys uh, can log on. If you're live right now, hurry up and log on if you're listening to this afterwards. Too late. Sorry. Snoozed um, and lused. Snoozed and the lused. So <laughs> before we get into the topics for the podcast, let's talk about our weeks, Mr. Kevin Kulex, because we haven't talked to each other since the last podcast because we're busy, busy guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, how was your week in gaming <laughs> in general? Week's been good. You know, I've uh, been listening to Shadows of Reach on the Audible right. while I work no and stuff like that. Yeah, no spoilers. Please. Yeah, we're not going to be talking about spoilers yet. I'm about four hours into like the 13 hours total for that book. Mm. And so far, like, it's pretty good. Um, I feel like the sections with chief kind of drag but again that's just like a little bit very oh, you, that's very you, uh, if you don't like long sections with chief you'll love halo 5 <laughs> <laughs> but uh so i've been listening to that when i'm at work uh obviously I've been playing the halo 4 flight on pc which has been pretty dang awesome with some pleasant surprises as well actually say mm-hmm. and then uh after all that is said and done that's about it. <laughs> and, I just, and just grinding out Halo content, man. How about you? Yeah, same. Uh, had a video do actually really well, which we'll get into the whole infinite armor coding things. My, my videos have been kind of cheeks lately on the views, but uh, that one did really well for my channel. So that was nice to get uh, some subscribers from that. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, it was my wife's birthday, so I kind of took the weekend off from everything and took her out a uh, weekend on the town. So that was really fun. Uh, I think we both really needed that. And um, besides that, I have just been uh, playing video games when I got back. Uh, trying to get this damn skin. We'll talk about it later. But yeah, Is just, MCC uh, skin tied to getting a certain rank in a specific timed playlist? Yeah. Time is of the essence, basically. Time, time, time. Exactly. Yes. And skill is of the FL essence, apparently, <laughs> because I'm just bad at Halo. So um so well, I doubt if I'll ever get it, but we'll get into that. Let's let's get right into the freaking this one shouldn't be a long podcast. I know we say that all the time, but we're gonna try to breathe through this. <laughs> so it ends up being uh, like an hour long every time. But yes. Right. Halo Infinite Armor Coding Armor News. Coding. Yeah, uh, I think maybe it's, it's been since the last time we chatted, it was revealed, and then now we know more about it it's still like a bit of a developing story right now when it comes to Halo mm-hmm. Infinite's customization yep and uh yeah we haven't talked about it since it was properly revealed like yeah we, obviously we talked about the monarch skin and all that but yeah. uh with the red shift when that came out we got a few more details on the uh codings there so um yeah do you want to go through some of the things that they listed there on the 
community update that Unicheck talked about. Yeah, he kind of goes into like obviously he goes into like initially like what the idea behind coatings are and stuff like that. Saying right. it's like a seven layer burrito and things like that, which mm. is delicious. I'm happy for that, you know. But uh mm. <laughs> um it's saying it replaces primary and secondary colors. Right. You know? And just hearing that information off the bat, it's like, yeah, that kind of sounds like it sucks. <laughs> you yeah. know? Um, yeah. They do mention about how these this coding system, even though it replaces primary and secondary colors, does offer more customization, but at the yeah. hand of 343. So whatever 343 makes and puts out, you can put it on your Spartan kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's basically just dominated the news story. I'm sure when Unishek made this thing, he's like, "Oh yeah, you know, we've been we've been seeing it out online with like different uh, advertisements from like Monster and Chips Ahoy and all these other kind of uh, brands doing the marketing programs. Like, okay, we'll just you know give it a little more information about like what you know what the idea behind armor coatings are and stuff like that. And then you know people have been crying for you know content drought. Well, here you go. Here's some content." And then it comes out to the public and it just starts a goddamn fire. And, yeah. and just like, no one's shutting up. No one can shut up about how much they don't like this. True. Like, I'm kind of sick of hearing about it, honestly. I'm kind of getting to that point, too. And it's only been like a week. <laughs> right. But that's what happens when it's literally the only thing we've had to talk about since the delay. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much like the main, like, solid confirmed 343 yeah. content that we can talk about because <laughs> we've you know as content creators man we've been trying to keep it you know keep the channels active with uh you know toy reveals and cookie cut and cookie cutter content <laughs> right. um but the recent news actually just came out like today even though it was previously known but it actually like actually confirms it today that the armor coatings Will cost five dollars for a single coating, uh, confirmed right. by uh, YouTuber Sean W, who thirsted for some information about where to pick up some damn Oreo cookies with this promotion on it. I haven't been, I've been looking around. I haven't seen anything about Halo Oreo cookies or anything like that in my area. Yeah, I'm really good looking. Yeah, you know, every time I go to the supermarket, I'm like, where them codes at? <laughs> you know, but I haven't seen anything. And uh, he found he found some codes, typed it on Halo Waypoint for the Redeem website, and said, "Congrat!" Or like uh, I think it was the Chips Ahoy website or something like that. And said, "Congratulations, you've earned yourself one Monarch skin worth five dollars." And they have to mention it because it's like that's like legally they have to mention the cost of what you the prize have is. Five dollars. <laughs> Old meme, man. Old meme. Okay. Oh, oh. Because we don't say old names all the time. <laughs> and uh, so it, it's even got the community in, up in more arms about uh, armor coatings. I even saw Angry Joe retweet oh, that. Snap. Yeah, re he retweeted Sean W's tweet saying, like, show, showing this worth five bucks with just like the um, the gif from uh, that Blink 182 video where he's like, WTF? You know? What yeah. The book? You know, kind of stuff. And like, so uh, we're probably going to get an angry rant here coming pretty soon about Halo Infinite. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's, yeah, he tore Halo 5 up for its microtransactions, so I'm sure he'll go in on Infinite. Yeah, of course, and we still also don't have the full story when it comes to Infinite's microtransactions and customization right. as well. So that's why I'm still holding off, like, flipping tables. I, but my right. hand, my hands are ready. They're underneath. I'm like, do I, do I, do I, do I need... To go? Do I just? You know, I'm like the the, the, the the half the tables are kind of just like it's barely hanging on the ground, you know. Right. But um, but I'm I'm certainly am concerned about that. Um, though Unishrek did go online and on Twitter post up a thread on Twitter, just kind of trying to ease some concerns and confusions yep. about it, saying that you still will will be able to earn codings in game for free. Yep. That's still gonna be a possibility. You'll still be earning codings for in-game achievements as well. So there yeah. might be like a new Hayabusa, but for armor codings or whatever, or vehicle codings or weapon codings and things like that. But yeah, there are going to be paid versions as well, which I kind of expected with uh, the general trend when it comes to 
monetizing microtransactions in games is that you don't touch the gameplay, but you monetize the customization. The Halos always have a very always had a very strong history of giving players options for customization. So I was like, how are they gonna balance this? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh so what are your initial thoughts of hearing armor coatings cost five dollars? I don't really care. Uh I'm so sick of this damn <laughs> this damn argument. Yeah, I, I get uh, the whole situation in general. I get why people are angry that um original you know, color selection isn't there. I've offered a solution in my video three for three. Like Unishek said, he's read a lot of the feedback um, about this, and you know our voices are heard, which I'm sure oh, yeah. they definitely heard the feedback. Is, <laughs> yeah, three for three is probably gonna change it. Um, you know, uh, to what we don't know. Um, I I'm in the in the camp where it's like, yeah, I think there should be primary and secondary armor color customization. And then, like I've said before on the podcast, with the coatings, maybe let us um, put colors where there wasn't really colors before if you just choose a primary second. So, like like you see in the red shift, there's knuckles that have different colors. The, you know, cod piece, the under armor have a little highlight. Yeah, the under armor, the, uh, your boots, your gauntlets, a lot of that stuff it has little accents here and there because of the coatings. Like you said, it's a seven-layer burrito um, which 343 says is up to the artist, which I wonder if that leaves, like if, I mean, maybe you could pay money for it or if it's an unlock. What if you get the option to actually build your own armor coating or vehicle coating? That would be really cool because it yeah. says up to the artist and there's been user-generated content before. That's user-generated content. That would be really cool. I think that would also make people really happy, but Putting that behind a paywall will not make people happy if you have to, um, you know, charge for that. But that is the reality of Halo Infinite. Free to play. As soon as we heard free to play, we knew there were going to be some sort of microtransactions. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm glad there's no paid loot boxes, but that is just a reality of AAA games that have a huge multiplayer following. Um, you're going to get microtransactions. A game like Cyberpunk, you don't really need microtransactions. A game like Witcher, stuff like that, that's easy to get away with when you're a single-player game. Some single-player games still put them in their games. True. But that is the harsh reality of... I'm not defending that. I'm just not shocked by it, nor do I care as much as other people about it uh, because I'm a red versus blue Spartan most of the time. Anyways, I don't play FFA. I don't play things like that. And I don't really see my character unless I'm in third-person grabbing a turret or driving a vehicle so to me what's more important is like weapon skins i think vehicle skins are really cool as well because you get to see those um, but i do get where people are coming from and like i said i thought that would be a good compromise if they do original primary secondary and then um, add to it with the coatings allow for more customization mm -hmm. and i get where three for three is kind of coming from where the mindset that this allows for more character customization because it does if you earn it, you know, like say, you know, you complete lasso, legendary, whatever, and you can get an armor coating for that. That'd be cool. That adds more customization to that player. You That sticks out like, oh, that dude right there, he did something cool in game, yeah. you know, almost like a, a, a armor uh, effect or, you know, like the flaming head, katana, things like that. If they do it that way and you can earn in game all for that. And they mentioned that specifically in that post. Like, yes, mm -hmm. you will still be able to earn some of these things in game which I'm fine with. And yeah, most games like Fortnite, freaking Apex, Gears, they all did the Call of Duty. You want a certain skin, you could pay for it. Um, and yeah, I'm not surprised that Halo's going that route. Anyways, as long as I could still earn really cool stuff in game, then so be it, whatever. Actually, an interesting thing I watched, uh, if you don't know who Ascend Hyperion is on YouTube, uh, he put together a video, pretty good video. I mean, obviously, the data set that he worked with was very small, but it kind of gives you a general idea where he says, uh, like, yeah, like uh, like Halo Reach, for example, for all the, arm, uh, the color combinations you could have or 900 different combinations you can have for uh, Halo Reach's coloring, which is cool. Like, mm -hmm. I come out, that amount of customization, very hard to find someone exactly like you. Everyone's worried, oh, God. Like, how is 343 going to have, like, a thousand different armor coatings, you know, <laughs> in the right. game without everyone looking the same? But the interesting thing is that that's a kind of a bit of a misleading statistic, though, because 
there's that's like actual amount of uh variation that you can have with your colors and as a spartan but what's the actual variation like what do people mainly use most right. of like because you know how popular like, the red and black combo right. is right. that everyone everyone cites that one i rock that one for the longest time as well i'm not gonna lie all through halo one two and three that was red and black the whole time <laughs> yep. i thought that was cool right and even then i still felt unique you know <laughs> yeah and i mean the, the the colors are whatever you know like to me like i said we're mostly red versus blue anyways the more custom is like the more stuff where you're set your spartan different from everybody else's is the armor pieces mm -hmm. which if we're getting the reach style of customization back you should have no pro and and unishek said that to uh, i think Vito was said how concerned he was and he and unishek's like dude i would not worry one bit about personalizing your spartan in halo infinite and yeah. making it your own he's like it there you, you will look like how you want to look like you know and and i there's gonna be hundreds and hundreds of different armor uh you know pieces to to choose from and if they're supporting this game for 10 years they're gonna keep adding to it and oh, adding yeah. to it like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like i said i'm not really that worried about it yeah um, I, I'm, I'm there's certain sides of the fan base that will worry about things like this i just want a fun halo game that i can grind away and unlock a bunch of cool things and show it off to people that's that's what i want i want good gameplay good overall experience unlock stuff via challenges or challenging things in the game and and basically freaking taunt people with that and like oh my god look at this guy you know like i when they announced that the magnum wasn't coming back for now at launch i didn't freak out about it like a half the fan base it's just i'm like all right that's your design decision i trust you make a good game i didn't yeah. freak out about the speaker not being in halo 5 i'm like okay yeah it looks shitty it looks like a generic freaking military rocket launcher but did not affect my enjoyment of the game whatsoever i'm not like oh my god three for three is incompetent oh, yeah. Yeah. what the, the hell they're doing <laughs> get them away from halo no i i like, all right, yeah, it looks crappy. Looks like a generic rocket launcher. Guess what? Still pick it up, still use it, still play the hell out of Halo 5, still enjoyed it. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's definitely two sides of the fan base that are, um, you know, they, they're very vocal with, with how uh, they, they kind of, you know, this kind of stuff matters to them. And I don't blame you guys for that. I'm not saying it's wrong to care that much about stuff because some people, it, it means a lot to them. But I'm just saying from my point of view, it, it doesn't affect me that much, you know. So I want, I kind of thought of this analogy and I've been bringing it up in a couple of videos, but I think it works out rather well. It kind of giving the same feeling of satisfaction when it comes to creating your Spartan. So mm -hmm. say you're, say you're making cookies, right? Mm -hmm. And there's mainly two ways you can make cookies. You can either do it from scratch of like balancing out the flour, the sugar, the butter and, you know, and, and vanilla. And if you want chocolate, chocolate chips, chip or if you, if you want, if you want to make a peanut butter, ch ch you know, cookie, if you want to make a peanut butter chocolate cookie, or if you want to make a chocolate chocolate chip cookie kind of thing, like raisin. Yeah. Or oatmeal raisin. I still love oatmeal raisin. Bomb ass cookie right there. But uh, <laughs> I know people hate their raisins and cookies. I personally love it. But anyways, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm just an old boomer. Like are, that. <laughs> but like think of it like so you make that so you make your cookie from scratch you're like i made this cookie you like right. and when you look and it tastes great you're like that's that level of satisfaction you're like i from beginning to end that was all me i did this you know compared to like pre-made dough that you buy at the store that all you gotta do is just put it you know cut it up and put it in the oven and then you go like you still get baked cookies at the end of, at the end of the day, but True. which one do you feel like you made? And which one, you you can still say I made cookies, even though all you did was just yeah. bake them, right? But yeah. one feels way more gratifying to have, and one is just like a quick fix kind of thing, or something that's just a like just like... one for you. <laughs> I got a dirty analogy. Oh, okay. Think about building a PC. How satisfying yeah, that is. That's true. That as well. Yeah. When you hit that power button and it works, and you're mm -hmm. like. I just built a PC. I feel like such a genius. Oh my God. You know, it's really not that hard to do, but it's still like a great feeling. Or if you work on a car, you know, instead of taking it in the mechanic and spending all that money, oh my God, I changed my brake pads by myself. Sure, it took eight hours. And it took a mechanic <laughs> like one hour to do, but I, I did it. I did that myself. You know, there's $500. Yes, that's <laughs> that for true. I, I, I definitely get that. It's a good analogy, and, and I get where people are coming from with that, but I, I still think we will have, I mean, if, it's basically the shader system from destiny they even said shaders like in the mm -hmm. description of, mm -hmm. um 
and I never had a problem making my person look the way I wanted in Destiny. Now, some people may be more picky, so that could be a problem for them, but I'm sure we will all find something that we really like that's like, okay, that's dope, you know? Or like recently in Halo 4, so we've been playing the flight, I customized my sparring up a bit, and then I was just kind of like throwing some armor pieces and some colors together. I'm like, oh, I kind of like that blue shade. Oh, I kind of like that green shade. This visor kind of matches with that. And I'm like, dude, I just made, I made like a Seahawks themed Spartan. And I was like, that's yeah, freaking so cool. You had the wrong green at first, but you fixed it. Yeah, I was then, proud of you. Yeah, then I fixed it. It was a little too pale of a green. Even though I like I the pale. Used to rock uh, back in Halo 4 when you could have the football helmet, I used to rock blue and red for my buffalo bills so exactly yeah and but you see like i feel like i made that spartan now we'll be th we'll through for three be able to make that blue and green spartan that oh, kind of resembles seahawks Seahawk. yeah that's licensing that, that, though, that's though. gonna be like the first freaking one out there'll be like an nfl pack that actually would be sick if they make it like an yeah. nfl pack and you can like earn I it some way or something yeah right i know not to mention fortnite oh my yeah. god fortnite but they did it they did it what if you look at the right i don't know yeah, so, yeah, obviously we also don't, so basically we just don't have the full story when it comes to Halo Infinite's right. customization. As, as everything with Halo Infinite, we need more info. <laughs> um, actually, uh, a good other thing I watched a Sean W video, you kind of brought up the point too, it's like, they tell us that this new system is great, they showed us what it can do, but why is it better than what we used to have? They didn't really explain that part too well. It seems like we lost features. And so if they're able to, and, and I think they're, okay. I'm guessing their hands are probably tied when it comes to showing more when it comes to customization. That's why it probably oh, came yeah. off sounding really bad. Uh, yeah. But because they didn't really, he showed like what the new system is, but they didn't show why that new system is better. They keep telling us like, it's better because we have more option for customization. I'm like, yeah, but what about my options for customization? Though? Right. We don't really know. But before in Halo, you were never able to customize material. Um, the shaders allow for that. So I don't completely agree with what Sean W says that it's, you know, why is it better? Because that's that one feature alone is better to me. Like, okay, now I can add different textures to my armor, which I think is really cool. Um, so th that would be a positive. And Destiny did that with their shaders too. You could have carbon fiber looks, something a little more glossy, more mattes, more chromey, you know, like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I don't completely agree with that, but I get where he's coming from with that with that comparison saying, you know, well, it, you, you're taking away from the player. You know, yeah. that, at the end of the day, that's what it's from. That That's what it comes down to. You're taking away from the player, and players don't like that. When you make decisions for them, they do not, especially in Halo, which <laughs> has always been a game about freedom of choice. It's a sandbox game. The customization has always been about freedom of choice. Um, then that's where you get a little bit, eh. but mm -hmm. you know, speaking of that too, they also showed us the customization of, or a coding of a vehicle, which was mm -hmm. really cool yeah. to see. Um, can't wait to hopefully see, dude, like that brings the possibility of the golden warthog can definitely make oh, its yeah. debut finally. Mm -hmm. And Halo Infinite chromed out freaking gold camo. I'm already gold picturing gold. like the, uh, that. Yeah, I'm already Ray picturing that. Oh. Yeah, like the uh, like you remember like those uh, per uh, updates trailers that we'd have for Halo Five, right? Yeah, and I remember like the one goes like, "Oh yeah, pizza." Yeah. Now, now I'm picturing <laughs> that for like, "Oh yeah, Gold War hog." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, again, like I said, like I said, we don't have the full story when it comes to customization. Not time yet to flip ta flip tables, but you know we're. We're getting, we're getting ready. We're getting ready to right. flip. Man. You guys are. I'm, I'm, I understand. I'm not flipping out about this, honestly. I could care less. I'm, I'm just ready to play the damn game. But yeah. I get where people are coming from. I, I get y'all. I feel for y'all. And I always try to. Like, yeah, I'm always going to be outspoken. You know, I'm probably not going to agree with the comment or the vocal minority or the vocal majority, or whatever it may be in this case. Um, I'm always going to tell you guys how I feel personally. That's how I feel. But I always do try to get where people are coming from. And I absolutely understand where everybody's coming from with this. It, it isn't right to be taken away from the players. It just doesn't resonate that, you know, that much with me. Mm -hmm. so, I think I saw a regular, I think I saw a Reddit post earlier today talking about like according to three four three, Halo Reach is worth thirteen thousand dollars in value because of like 
multiplying the uh, color customization options times five, so like 900 times five, whatever that was, well, yeah. that would come to uh, $4,500 then, right? I, I don't know. I, well, $45,000, something like that. I don't know, math. I, I made math. I stopped doing math after high school. <laughs> but like so i was like okay chill dude you're being a little outrageous right here when it comes to that they're doing it for the views and yeah the, yeah the upvotes, hey know? man got but, like yeah. high, it got over 100 upvotes within like an hour <laughs> you go. everyone's like yeah i'm mad too <laughs> yeah i totally steered clear of reddit after the situation i heard <laughs> about it on a freaking minute basis over there so yeah mm -hmm. whatever all right Let's get on the Halo 4 flight because we Halo were four a lot flighting. Yes, that, so that kicked off on Thursday, right? Yes. Yes, yes Thursday. Thursday last mm -hmm. week. Yeah, Thursday of last week. Over a whole week so far, right? Not yet. Did, was it just a few days ago? It was just a few. It was just a few. It was just a few days ago. Yeah, maybe you're right. So, yeah, <laughs> maybe like four or five days ago. Yeah, yeah, it's been about that, yeah. I feel like it's been way longer. <laughs> I, just being away for, for the weekend makes me feel like I've been gone for so long. That's just, that's just, that's just what's called COVID time. Everything yeah, just goes slower. <laughs> Especially, I think also, like, our minds are kind of just based on, like, Halo time as well. Like, how often we get information. So, like... The days have been really grindy the last like few weeks. <laughs> like yeah. so that kind of information stuff. Um but yeah, Halo Force Flight came out. Pat, you played it, right? Yep. I played it a bunch good. as well. Uh so initial experience. What are your thoughts? Feels good. Yeah. Feels great. I don't hate Halo Force. A lot of the Halo 4 fan base does. It's not my favorite Halo. It's not in my top three, but um, still found enjoyment in it. Still max ranked it. Still uh, played it quite a bit. Um, and it feels better than it's ever felt. Just like most of the things that have come to PC with the increased frame rates, that makes a huge difference. And yeah, it feels great. It looks great. Halo 4 is one of the sexiest games uh, in the series. I, I still think it looks better at, than Halo 5 in some parts. Uh, still, I say that. We know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially we on the skyboxes. Yeah, the skyboxes are freaking incredible. The scale of game. Halo 4 felt way bigger than Halo 5. Yeah, yeah. Especially in campaign. Um, mm. And some of the best big team battle. I haven't actually got a chance to play big team yet, which is kind of... I mean, I'll, I'll play it once it comes out on PC. But um and crossplay, crossplay is there yeah. working flawlessly. I've uh, been playing with friends on Xbox, working flawlessly on that. So, um, really cool stuff. Just ready for it to be released and get these features into MCC as soon as possible because I, I crossplay is huge. Um, can't wait for that. Honestly. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a serious game changer when it comes to finding oh, games yeah. that you want to play. Hopefully, then yeah. I can finally play Halo Three Hardcore. Hopefully, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Because I remember they mentioned how they were going for a per playlist basis when it comes to input based matchmaking, and then you have the and they said they weren't gonna have the ability to toggle it on and off, but then when you turn on the flight, you have the ability to turn off on on to toggle off or on cross play cross platform and cross like, input device. Yeah, I, thought, I I don't know when did they say you couldn't toggle it off. That was like uh, that was the they, September they, they said that you couldn't switch back and forth between like like you can now between once you're choosing oh, yeah, a launch input input device, yeah. Right, but yeah, you, it locks you to the device. I don't remember them saying that. But they mentioned about how um it would you wouldn't but per it'd be on a per playlist basis of what like the input right. based matchmaking would be. Which right. would like infection and stuff, you couldn't uh, but it, it was know. all yeah for that one it was the wild west but if you're playing hardcore right. it'd be like you're only matching keyboard you're only matching right. controller things maybe, like that. maybe the stuff in the flight is stuff that is only you know that they consider to be stuff that you shouldn't be able to switch back and forth between maybe that i will have to wait and see until the full release to see mm -hmm. um what they consider because I, I think they, they mentioned affection and one other playlist that i can't remember that they're like all right well with those kind of playlists they probably um, that was firefight i think they also mentioned was like yeah yeah mm -hmm. Where you can, it doesn't matter really, which is good. Right. Yeah, that's right. exactly how that should be as well. Right. Uh, my biggest surprise with this flight, the unlimited frames working really yeah, well. It feels good. It's yeah, the super smooth. We it would be a problem. Yeah. yeah, like just like Halo Three, Halo Three ODSC, it's just I've been playing on 120 at you know FPS the whole time, and it's been like super smooth. And I was really ex 
you know, was expecting the same kind of issues because we have had those issues with bad interpolation with the Halo Reach and H2A with the bad, yeah. you know, framiness of, of anything above 60. If your hands up like you want to say something. Yes, thank God for <laughs> freaking monitor selection. That's yes, been that wasn't added. it too. I've been added yes. <laughs> for so long. Um, it kind of screws up with shadow play i don't know if you've tried using shadow play mm. it won't record like if you uh, it's it's a little bit buggy but otherwise if you're not using shadow play you're not a content creator it works flawlessly so that <laughs> is awesome thank god that that's there i mean i just use the monitor that it automatically goes to my primary monitor and in my secondary right. monitor that's just what we used to have to do anyways when uh but like when i'm recording my prime when i'm recording videos i like to record a 4k 60 but I don't like playing at 4K60. I'd rather play 1440, 240 frames on that monitor. So, you know, I, I have to switch back and forth depending what? on if I'm trying to create, you know, content <laughs> or if I'm trying to just play and go try hard. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it, totally. It, it definitely. I mean, I, I know I'm not, I'm probably the minority with that, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice thing to have. It, it should have been in there. You know, a lot of games nowadays have that feature. So I'm just glad it's there. Oh, yeah, that too, yeah. And then also like the per game uh, graphics options as well. You can turn on like awesome. the anti-aliasing, the water uh, effects, sure. particle effects, yeah. blood, even if you want to do that. And just like I hope, that, I hope that lets us have blood in Infinite. I mean, I know it's a small thing, but I just like seeing some blood splatter, you know. I mean, Halo 5 had it, but I don't know. I just, I if you could really customize it like that in Infinite, that'd be awesome. Awesome mm -hmm. to have. I would think so. Yeah. I think you, I mean everything they've done in MCC so far is basically leading up to Infinite. We've we've talked about that several times. I mean, it's was, the testing grounds. There, there was even like a leaked thing that came out, a leaked text thing that came out. So it could have been from anybody and from any. There was like no sourcing really, but they said that Halo Infinite is supposed to kind of be like a sequel to the MCC in a way yeah. of how it like which I can see how it functions and stuff. Which I like, yeah, that would make yeah. sense. They already said it's gonna be a platform. Yeah, you know. And the MCC is a platform like, for Halo, classic Halo. Exactly. So that would yeah. make sense. Uh, you guys want an infinite ba uh, flight? Y you're playing it. MCC. That's, <laughs> your infinite that's, that's the beta for infinite. We're testing all these new features coming to infinite. Probably. If you were a community manager, I don't think you would last more than a day. Think stuff like that. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I would. Uh, I mean, if I'm getting paid to do it, you know, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm if, I'm get, if I'm getting I'm paid, getting paid, though, paid. Getting, you know, if I'm I, I paid, get, yeah. otherwise, I'm gonna yeah. be some yeah. outspoken fucking internet dude, uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> totally. Uh, but like, uh, yeah, cause I got a chance to play the BTB game and uh, BTB days actually. It was like on Friday and I think Sunday as well. And yeah, yeah, it's fun actually. I kind of actually had like a recently had just like a new appreciation for Halo 4 from playing mm -hmm. it now. I just have a totally different mindset that I was back in like 2012, 2010, where I was like, yo, it could be like this. This is right. my, this is not my Halo. Yeah. Which it, obviously it still lacks in like the balancing and just like the fairness that previous Halos offered. But mm -hmm. Halo it's 4 so as a casual so game, funny. if you play more for just like cool moments rather than good gameplay, you find yourself enjoying yourself a lot more playing that game. It's essentially like uh, just like the whole game is like a, a glorified Team Fiesta, pretty much, with like the weapon drops awesome. and it also the ordinance drops as well. Right. And Legendary Slayer is actually really fun too, uh, where you just start out B R A R no abilities. Um, I always thought that. I mean, the B R in Halo Four actually feels really good. So. Oh yeah, like the hit detection in Halo Four feels great. It's super oh, yeah. snappy. Definitely. Even yeah. a little too snappy because that light rifle. I don't know if you've been playing around with that at all in multiplayer. That thing is freaking oh, deadly. It's scoped in, so yeah. four shots, like one, two, Hard three, death. four, boom, dead. Yeah. Like, and <laughs> I've gotten into some sweaty BTB lobbies. All I hear is like, <laughs> like everywhere. It's a bit obnoxious because of how, yeah. you know, hit scan the weapons are and stuff like that. But if you get into a fun casual lobby, then it's actually fun. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But uh, for yeah, most part, like yeah, Halo Four is surprisingly good on PC, and most of it would make me think that H two A might get the same update since you know Halo Four H two A ran on a modified or updated version of Halo Four's engine. I would think the H two A would begin the unlimited frames update, maybe even when Halo Four releases. Yeah, could be. You yeah. know, I would think that'd be very possible, but uh, yeah. obviously, yeah. you know. 
that's my you know backseat game developer hat you know wearing right there but i would think they'd be coming around the corner pretty soon then if it yeah, comes, definitely but when it comes to reach uh yeah maybe something else we don't know <laughs> yeah but yeah uh halo 4 flight has been great uh move over to the uh the specially special ranked skin in the mcc yeah. yes uh it ranked halo mcc has been struggling pretty much yeah. ever since like january i would say yeah uh, even with halo 3 i remember like when you know reach first came out on pc i was playing ranked finding games no problem one through ten it was it felt so good to play one through ten. I was dominating. It felt so great. <laughs> then once I get to like, you know, ten through twenty, it felt pretty average. And then twenty and above felt pretty sweaty. And then once I hit like I got up to like twenty-four, and then people kind of just stopped playing altogether when it comes to ranked Halo. And yeah. it seemed like each subsequent subsequent uh release of MCC ranked that uh it was popular for maybe like a month and then completely dead. Yep. Even when we're Halo 3 right now, I'm like ranked 13 or 14. Can't find any games. I'm not high enough ranked to match against people who are still playing Halo 3 ranked. Right. And so, trying to revitalize the ranked playlist, it seems like 343 has kind of brought in a special Arctic camo for your sniper rifle to uh, earn in a ranked playlist in the MCC. Pat, what are your thoughts on this camo and the idea of having locked content behind the playlist? Well, hopefully it's locked. I hope this is locked, but some people are complaining about it. And, you know, when people complain, they'll probably get their way. And like, I don't have time to play ranked and get to level 20. I'm not good enough. So just give it to me in the season pass. So they, w the way it's described is play Halo 3 Recon Slayer, which is mm -hmm. ODST Magnums and Tactical SMGs with Suppressor Silencer from ODST with a bunch of other um, weapons on the map that you're used to from Halo 3, along with the Brute Plasma Rifle. Mm -hmm. And you you have to get to rank 20, and then you get the Arctic Camo for the Sniper Rifle once Season 4 lands. That's all they say. So some people are speculating, oh my god, it's going to be available anyways in the Season Pass. I hope not. I hope this is something exclusive, and they keep it that way, and put their foot down. Like, alright, listen, if you can't get the Camo, oh well. There should be exclusive stuff for people who play the crap out of the game, who are yeah. good at the game, who want to do a challenge. Let them have that. It's not taking away from you playing the game. You can still play the game as much as you want. But there are certain rewards that should go to players that are more dedicated to the game. That's how I feel. I, I It doesn't matter to me that, you know, yeah, sometimes I don't have time for it either, but I'm not going to complain about it. So um, the thing I will complain about is all the damn sweats in this freaking playlist. It is crazy. <laughs> Once you get into the teens... How you know good people? Oh, yeah. are. I guess Vito you know, got his twenty in it, and he said basically twenty is like the new fifty. Uh, <laughs> it really is. Place. It's <laughs> it's tough, man. It is really tough, and um, I have not been enjoying my time on it. But I'm gonna keep trying. I'm at a fourteen right now. Yeah, because so like trying to get. To that's one thing I thought realized too is that like uh, especially right now for the MCC, if you try if you get a fifty right now in the MCC, like. Oh my God. First of all, you're lucky enough to find enough games. Second of all, right. you're a damn good player because the people who are still playing ranked MCC are the people who are like dedicated Halo players. They're like, I only play Halo multiplayer. That's what right. I play. I've never left. Yeah, exactly. I never left kind of thing. So it's yeah. not exactly the same idea. I remember I've heard so many people like, oh, when I got my 50 back in Halo 3, it was so rewarding. I'm like, I don't think you'd be the quality player who would get a 50 right now in the MCC. I'm sorry. You got to throw it out there. Some people... Yeah. You know, probably got a 50, you know, because of how many people were playing and compared to the entire public, then, yeah, you're a 50 quality player. Right. Maybe nowadays, and, uh, not so much. <laughs> with with this playlist, too, um, I've been able to find matches pretty reliably on PC, but Xbox, yeah. I could not find a single match. When it released, I tried playing with some friends on Xbox, could not find a single match, so... It may, I don't, that was like when it first came out, maybe a lot of people didn't realize it was on there. I haven't tried it recently, but um, on PC, yeah, pretty reliably finding matches. So that's, that's nice to see, even though I, I really is just starting to hate this playlist. It's just <laughs> been, it is so sweaty, man. It is, oh, yeah. it is ridiculous. Especially for how like kind of uh, less consistent the, the uh, automatic feels in Halo 3 as well. It's definitely yeah. more consistent than like the Magnum in Halo 3. That's for sure. 
Uh, right. But yeah, it definitely still has like that bullet spread randomness to it as well that you can't really get around. And um, you know, I, I played a little bit with some friends and uh, I think I'm up to like rank nine, maybe. And even then, I'll still come across some pretty competitive lobbies and some very familiar names by the end of the play session. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, and I think it has like partial party matching. So I think if, you, if you're searching for in a team of three or more, it's only going to match you with teams of three or more. Maybe going yeah. with a team of two might be the most optimal way to try to rank up in this yeah, playlist. I've tried and uh, not worked very well for us. Really? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but that's, I, I like the idea a lot. Like I said, I'm glad that they you're incentivizing people to play ranked as my favorite settings in MTC, in all of Halo or Halo 3 hardcore settings. Just my preference right there. But, right. Um, you know, if they for, put some more incentives behind that, I think it'd be really nice to like, hopefully, you know, get more people to jump in and play. You know, that's what they did back in Halo 5. You get a, a new emblem every season because you, yeah. you know, at least earned a rank. And, you know, you please play 10 games to get mm -hmm. your rank and stuff like that. So super useful stuff. I think that's a great way to try to get people to play. And, you know, rank definitely needs some love. I think even in the most recent uh, Friday MCC development update, um, was it Snickerdoodle or Sam, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Even posted in there like, hey, so uh, squad battles in Halo 4's flight is kind of dead. Yeah, someone we, need yeah, yeah. we need people to play this. <laughs> And I actually played a little bit of Squad Biles, I think on the second night of the flight, or maybe even the first night. It was actually kind of fun uh, to yeah, play. It for a bit. It's kind of like that middle ground between like 4v4 and BTB. Yeah. And so definitely want to check it out if you can. Um, especially when the game finally launches. You want If you ever want to play Squad Biles, you have to play it definitely within the first month. I guarantee you after that it's going to be dead. Unless they have some new incentives like this coming out for uh, the MCC. Dead in like two weeks. Yeah. I have a feeling the same thing yeah. as well. Yeah. But all right. So Halo playlist update. Playlist Move on update. And uh we have some MCC stuff for you guys. So Halo 3, like we said, ranked recon slayer has debuted. Halo 2 Classic and Halo 2 Anniversary Hardcore have rotated out because they're gonna be consolidating playlists to try to keep that population up and ranked. Uh shoddy, uh it says snotty snipers rotates out. I like that. <laughs> snotty snipes. Uh, has rotated out uh, for MCC. They also fixed an issue where players could match against wider than intended range of player ranks in Invasion, and also fixed an issue where players could exploit ranked hoppers by blocking other players, which me and Jim tried the other day because we kept matching a pro team of just like <laughs> Vader and all his people. And he was actually getting really mad on stream, uh, which was kind of funny. Uh, really? At me. Why? He was getting like, he called me Panda. He's like, this pe this uh, the Panda Gaming guy is uh, really pissing me off. I don't know. I, <laughs> Jim kept quitting out. Me and Raps were just left there like 2v4, and I was just staying there and, and, and you know, shooting and teabagging, of course, if, when I killed them. So he was getting mad at me. Uh, so that was fun. Uh, but we didn't really want to match them anymore because they were a four stack, and we were getting wrecked by them. But that didn't work. So, yeah, you can't do that anymore. As far as... Playlist for Halo 5. It is Halo 5's birthday, like we said, guys. Uh, all month long, you have Global Double XP in all playlists. Uh, for the 29th, Roaming King is rotating in for Action Sack. Yeah. And Turbo, yes. Ro Roaming King is actually really fun. Rose, uh, Warzone Turbo is going live on the 29th as well for the weekend. So go on and get them 152s. Go on. Go on. Yeah, get it. Go on. Uh, get them 152s, and uh, we'll see you in Infinite, rocking whatever coding they decide to give us for that uh, 152. Uh, Earth 343 decides to bless you. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> MSRP value of 499. So for your hundreds and hundreds of hours of dedication. So yeah. Besides that, that is it. That is the end of the show. Let's freaking get in uh, out of here freaking you guys want to come watch us play some yeah. recon slayer and get wrecked you know feel free to join us after the stream or after the podcast i should say and watch on there but kevin if people are looking to find your content looking to follow you on social media stay up to date on all the latest happenings of the world of halo where can they find you you can find me on twitter at kevin coolx halo youtube kevin coolx instagram kevin coolx twitch kevin coolx um 
Fans, I mean, um, only, I mean, uh, no, that's not, that's not, that's not a thing. I'm sorry. What, what am I talking about? <laughs> uh, you can find the podcast also on Podbean and Spotify as well. If you don't want to waste your phone battery listening on YouTube. Link in this, all the links for our stuff is in the description down below as well. I recently actually just put together a link tree uh, that I think I'm going to be trying to f utilize a bit more as well. Uh, just because we have so many socials to everyone to check for everyone to check out that, uh, you know, it's one click. That's all your things. Do what you want with it, you know. <laughs> uh, what about you, Pat? How will people find your stuff on the internet? Well, speaking of link trees, just go to thepatmangaming.com and you guys can find all the stuff to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, um, YouTube, and Twitch. But if you guys want to follow certain things and don't want to head to the website for whatever reason, that is fine. Uh, you guys can find me anywhere on Twitch uh, at thepatmangaming, on Twitter at thepatmangaming, on YouTube at thepatmangaming, anything. Any, that below my name right there, the Patman Gaming, type in youtube.com slash twitch.tv slash the Patman Gaming. Slash Pat, slash, slash Pat, Pat, slash, 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 <laughs> the Pat. I've been meaning to put Not together a Pat. website, actually. I've been, I'm still kind of like trying to figure out exactly what's the best option for me on the whole thing, but I definitely wanted to put together a, a website as well, though. Yep. And yep. You, so you know, to go. So. Yeah, if you guys want to go check that out, links so everything is in the description of these videos and podcasts down below. We got to uh, ring 20 to get in recon, so yes, we do. we're to catch up. We got some work to do, Pat. Yes, we got to do it for the content. We <laughs> got to show content. it off in a video. I got to like, really see the, the, like, the mid-air like, reload animation like thumbnail for it. I can see it. Mm. Put a lens flare on it, JJ Abrams would be proud, and you get... All like 20 views, it's gonna be great. There you go, yeah, <laughs> zero views. But I want to do it anyway. So, signing off for episode 52. Thank you guys so much for listening and/or watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening. Peace.